You have people that are looking for meaning. You have people that are looking for truth. You have people that are looking for hope. You have people that are looking for healing. They're looking for all of these things and they're knocking on doors. And the church opens up and they see inside the church what they just left outside and they start scratching their heads going, what is this? You're offering me what they offered me and what they offered me did nothing in here. I'm still empty and broken and lost and purposeless. I sit in my mansion with my butler and my cook looking at a rope thinking of how I can make a noose. Everything they told you would make you happy makes people miserable. Why are billionaires throwing themselves in front of trains and millionaires hanging themselves from makeshift nooses? Because money brings happiness? Because darkness brings fulfillment? Because sin is the gateway to joy? But if you offer nothing... And by you, I mean the church. Look, we have failed. We're not failing. We have failed. Because we didn't hold to the truth. We didn't hold to holiness. We didn't say, if you want hope, come here. If you want purpose, come here. If you want to know true joy, come here, read this book, understand who Jesus is, understand what Jesus did for you on the cross. Oh, that's too heady for them. What's the old saying? That'll push them away. You know, you hit them with too much truth at once, it'll push people away. No, because that's what they're looking for. They've been poisoned and they're looking for the antidote. And you have it. And you're afraid of administering it. God help us when we stand before him. Because for every one person that came to us weeping and broken and crying and saying, I need something more than what's out there. And the only thing we were able to do is say, I've got a more demure dressed version of it in here. If that's the only thing that we could give them then their blood will be on our hands. Do not be afraid of speaking the truth because the truth is all you've got. It doesn't matter if it offends. It doesn't matter if it wounds. What it wounds is the sin. What it offends is the sensibility of sin. And eventually they will come around and thank you for preaching truth into their life. I was reading this this morning when I woke up. I I woke up at 4 o'clock your time because I'm on Wisconsin time. And it was out of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 15. And this, this is a message for the church more than those of the world because most of this book, guess what? It's not written for them. It's not written for those of the world. The world cannot perceive the wisdom of the gospel. And so when God says, do not love the world or the things in the world, he's not talking to those of the world. And if he's telling you not to love the world, and if he's telling you not to love the things of the world, then it means that there is a potentiality in you, even being sanctified, that you may fall in love with the world again. (gasps) Some of you are angry with me now. No, that'll never happen, brother argue with the book because I've met a lot of self-assured people who shipwrecked their faith because they were too self-assured that can never happen to me until it does guard your heart guard your heart understand that the devil is wily understand that he's been at this business far longer than you've been alive And he knows what buttons to push. Guard your heart. Begin with this foundation. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Why? Because they are incompatible with God. That's what he says. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 